Welcome to the Assist Podcast. I'm your host, Jack Schwartz, and joining me today is a longtime friend. Uh, we grew up together, uh, did a lot, played a lot of soccer together, uh, and of course, he is my other Zach. It is Zach Smith, joining me from Philadelphia. Zach, how are you doing? What to do, baby? <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you on, finally. Hey, very honored to be on. So, Zach, you are a year younger than me. You graduated a year after me, and... Instead of going to the, I guess, most popular route of college, you went into the Coast Guard to serve our great nation. Talk to me kind of like, I guess we can dive straight in here. What do you do in the Coast Guard as of now? What have you? I know you, your role has shifted a little bit over the past year. You've been in now a year. You just got back after visiting uh, home. Yeah, that was awesome. I, it was good to see everyone. I got to play in the alumni game with you and... Man, that was so needed. I needed to come home. I bet, yeah. I mean, I know you texted me. We went to do this while you were home, and you texted me, and you're like, you know, I, I feel bad. We couldn't get it done, blah, blah, And I'm like, dude, I understand how, you know, it's great to be home, but how stressed you kind of are in a way because you want to see everybody. Oh, yeah, week. absolutely. I, I get it. <laughs> it's crazy. I tried to jam-pack as much stuff as I could, see as many people as I could. Yeah, spread the wealth, you know? No, no, that's how it is, especially, you know, when you get home, there's a lot of people, too, that hit you up, and you're like, uh, I haven't talked to you in months. That's weird. Like, I, yeah. you, know, you, haven't, you haven't hit me up. But uh, so what, what exactly are you doing at the Coast Guard? Walk me through what the Coast Guard is overall, kind of, because I think for some people, you know, they know the Army, they know the Navy, but the Coast Guard's kind of ambiguous. Yeah, most people don't know about us. Um, <laughs> so I guess I am your guy. That's right. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so the Coast Guard has a whole bunch of different um, missions. Okay. One of them being search and rescue. Um, so if there is a sinking boat or if there is a person in the water or a bridge jumper or mm-hmm. any sorts of stuff like that, um, that's one of our missions. Uh, we take our boats and we, we go really fast down the river or wherever – they're at and uh we try and go save some lives um we also do drug interdiction so we do migrant stuff uh off the keys and in the gulf um yeah i want to do that kind of stuff that that that's uh that stuff really intrigues me i want to be you know loaded up with a freaking um the kevlar vest and the gun and the shotgun and all that shit oh for the drug stuff you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Am I allowed to, like, who? who yes. Was? Yes, All you right. can swear. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so the drug stuff is your ideal. That's what I was going to ask later is what, like, you want to eventually get to once you get your terms of service, you know, and that kind of thing. Yeah, that's that's kind of where I want to be, but I got to – gotta. there's a couple different stuff that I'm thinking about. Um, okay. But back to your question, um, what I do is I – service uh lighthouses okay um so along the river and the coastline there are lights that help um boats and the big cargo ships navigate okay um so i climb up there i change light bulbs i change solar panels i change batteries and i Mm. i brush which just like mean chopping down trees Okay. I do all sorts of stuff. We're kind of like the uh, stepchild of the Coast Guard. No <laughs> one really knows what my unit does and stuff like that. But it's pretty chill. I like it a lot. That's great. That's great. Yeah. So you talk it. about the river. Uh, I'm not caught mm-hmm. up on my Pennsylvania geography. What river are you on? Okay. I'm on the Delaware River. The Delaware River. Okay, that sounds very yep. important. George Washington sailed that sucker. Wow. Is that for the is that the one where he went over to the battle, whatever of Trent, yep. I think it is? That's wow. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you are where George Washington may have stepped. I am in the heart. Have you heard, have you heard the stories of uh, how George Washington died? Do I know the stories? No, like have you there's been recent talk about him, I guess. Maybe I've just he- been hearing about podcasts. It's kind of funny. It's not funny actually because he died, but <laughs> um, it, it's for me it's a little funny for, medically. So he was sick, like he had like a cold or whatever, uh-huh. 
And the doctors were like, you need to get rid of your blood. Like, that's what they did in the past was like, oh, we're going to fix things by bleeding, of course. Now we know that's that's not really true because you need your blood to actually right. fight the infection. So basically the doctor killed George Washington because he forced him to repeatedly bleed out. Oh, what? That's crazy. Yeah. So um, anyone questions? Well, I, I, got a fun, I got a fun fact for you. Okay, let's hear it. All right, George, so you, obviously you know George Washington and Betsy Ross, right? I'm not sure. Betsy Ross sounds familiar, but... She's the one that uh, made the American flag. Like, that was the first one. Okay, all right, got it. Thank you. They had an affair. No way. Or hooking up. No, I, I don't know, but... That's Ooh, just, so that's not a fact? I don't know. I, maybe, may not. Who knows? Let's type into the Google. All right. George Washington hook up with Betsy Ross. But yeah, I, I, know just, for, I know for a fact that he lived behind her. Oh, so, so it's I possible. Kind of put, I kind of put like two and two together. I was like, oh, maybe. All right, let's see. Put their names together in Google. <laughs> yeah, see what comes up. Ooh, George Washington appeared on Mrs. Ross's doorstep. On yeah, the 1st see? of June, 1776. Oh, but that was her. That was him asking her to make a flag. Oh. Uh, maybe oh, she. Sh- uh, hey, Pop. How you doing? Maybe she enticed him. Okay, so no affair between Betsy Ross and George Washington, as far as we know. Dude, I, I'm telling you, man. It's on the DL, man. He was sliding in. He's like, hey, late night, you up? I mean, yeah, but I feel like in that time, just men were just like, yeah, you're going to have sex with me, and that's, that's the end of it. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Like, Dude, I mean, she had like four or five husbands or something like that. It's It's kind of weird to think of that. It's like... Yeah, you know, everything about – I love some of the revolutionary guys. You know, I love Ben Franklin. I read a biography on him, but it's like – Dude, like, he like he like uh, made the city like – That's right. Sorts of stuff in Philly, man. So like how, how big is he involved in this – like obviously not involved, but you know, like remembered in the city. The, so the two big like um, figures in Philadelphia are uh, William Penn, which is the one who created Pennsylvania. Yeah. And then Thomas Jefferson, or not Thomas Jefferson, um, Ben Franklin. Wow, that's that's pretty crazy. You think about it. Yeah, like he's he started like his own fire insurance company, his own yeah. insurance company. I mean, he did all sorts of stuff, man. He's a genius. He and the, I read a biography on him recently. Him and his uh, son got really uh, really dark because you know the son stayed with the British, and obviously everyone knows Ben Franklin was a big American patriot. So that was kind of yeah. That was rough and big old Ben's life. Crazy stuff. So what's the uh, – I haven't been to Philadelphia. I don't think many of our listeners have been. What's, what's the big things in Philly, like just being there for a year now? Do you like it? Oh, yeah. It's actually pretty cool. Um, the city never sleeps, man. <laughs> um, I, I mean there's so much stuff. Like obviously like the, the stereotypical like, oh, if you're coming for a few days, you got to see the Liberty Bell. You got to see the right. Rocky statue and independence hall and stuff like that but there's there's like so much more than that like um the history behind it there's there's a penitentiary there that i went to when my family was in for the fourth of july Mm -hmm. um they have like i mean i can't even it's crazy there's so much history and so much to do like there's bars everywhere there's little coffee shops there's I mean, you name it, they got it in the city, man. That's insane. That's it's crazy. Awesome. It's awesome. Do you like it better than Cleveland? Um, well, obviously <laughs> Cleveland's my home, but uh, I think I like it a little bit more. It, Philadelphia is definitely much, much bigger than Cleveland. That makes sense. That does make sense. Like when I came to- home, I went to uh, Browns game and I went to the Indians game with Joe, and um, uh-huh. we were downtown, and I was like, man, this isn't this isn't shit. <laughs> I've been in Philly traffic, like bumper to bumper, and everyone's honking, and like downtown Cleveland was just like it was calm. Yeah, crazy. Is Philly like? Is it nice? You know, is it is it like a nice? Or the obviously it has its bad parts. Every big city has its bad parts, but is it overall pretty nice? So, from what I understand, is Center City mm-hmm. is is pretty is pretty good. Okay. The further you get out, so like obviously the streets are numbered, like just like in Cleveland, like um, like Thirty Second Street or something like that. The higher the number that gets, the worse the um, 
the area gets. That's that's what I oh, observed. And uh, yeah, like um, I went to a wedding. Shout out to V, my roommate. Uh, he got he got uh, married on Wednesday. Well, congratulations. I know he uh, he's getting ready to get up and out of here, which is kind of sad. But um, anyways, oh. uh, so we were up in North Philly. That's where his wedding was, and uh, I don't know if you heard, but um, there was a shooting in Philly. I did. And, uh, yeah, that's totally unfortunate, and it just blows my mind. Thank um, goodness none of them are dead. Yeah. Yes. That's – it's a miracle. It, it, God bless. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I was right around that area a couple hours before. So if that happened wow. a couple hours earlier, like, I'm blessed. Very there, blessed. There is um, – you know, with the Dayton shootings a couple weeks ago, you remember uh, old friend Ryan Rush? Yeah, Rushy. Yeah, he was in Dayton. I mean, he wasn't near the area, but he was in the city when it happened. It's, That's crazy. It's terrifying. There was a uh, there was a guy over the summer here at UCF who I guess he had a BB gun, but it looked like a real gun. And so I guess there were 12 cops at the, at the housing facility he was in, you know, with... I mean, there are rumors fly around all about that, you know. Oh, they have their assault rifles out, blah blah. But I mean, they they were on top of it, you know, with all this. With you see, just in the news day after day, it's it's insane. Yeah, it's it's this world's getting a little crazy, man. Yeah, it is. So, do you go to any uh, like? Have you been to any Philly sporting events, for instance? So I was going to go. All right, backstory. So. <laughs> I was going to get tickets to the uh, Raptors and uh, Phillies. Oh, for the uh, or not Phillies, uh, the playoffs. Yeah, for the playoffs. But uh, the guy I was going to buy them from, he sold them that day, and I didn't have money on them. I was like, hey, can I you know, get them tomorrow? I'll bring the money and this and that. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries. I was like, oh, sweet, this is going to be dope. I think it was like game six or something like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I have the money. I can, next day I come up to him and be like, yo. Where the tickets at, bro? And he's like, "Oh, dude, I sold them." I was like, "Play like, what?" <laughs> I was so upset, dude. They were good seats too. They were like almost court side, bro. Yeah, that would been insane to that see. That would been dope. Uh, when Katie and I, Katie had a event like dancing for the Filipino Association in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Uh, so one of the events saw her and Vanessa Rose. Um, dance at a Cavs game and just happened to be playing the Raptors that day so while they were performing down on the floor pregame you know I got to see Kawhi Leonard warm up and I was like holy cow that's he's, awesome he's not human he's so, not dude he's he's bionic he's the claw bro no he's insane and of course the Cavs beat the Raptors that day by like 20 somehow um, yeah we go figure right right but yeah that was crazy to see so and Katie performed very well as well I should add so shout out to Katie hey shout out, shout out to Katie there you go uh, but, yeah. well, my uh, my roommate or my landlord, um, he uh, he's a huge uh, Toronto fan. Oh wow! Yeah, so uh, like during the whole finals, he's just like he's just going nuts. Like once once they uh, Kawhi hit that shot. Yeah, the the Ford bounce you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, the Ford yeah. Dork, yeah. He comes he comes running out. He's got we the North flag and he's got his <laughs> Canadian flag. He's like he's like we the North baby we the North. I was like Brian, I was like listen. I've been there. I've done that. I was four straight championships, for, uh, and listen, it ain't nothing new, man. <laughs> He's like, shut up, Smith. But well, that's yeah. with uh, the Cavs winning in 2016. The city almost came down. That's what I keep yeah, saying. I if, the, if the Browns win the Super Bowl, dude, in the if next the Browns three years, win the Super Bowl, bro, I'm one taking leave. I'm going to demand <laughs> leave to go to this parade. And I don't care how cold it is, bro. There's going to be like 5 million people there, and the city is just going to burst. At least. At least, for sure. I mean, it's a it's a, a, a football-driven city. Dude, Cleveland NBA fans city. are the best fans. Okay, I, I don't know about that. All right, listen. Sorry. Hey, have you won a chip? That's what I thought. <sighs> it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a decade now since the Red Wings last won a hockey championship. Uh, hey, we weren't talking about Red Wings, bro. I was talking no, about- I was just talking about Detroit in general. Oh. Uh, it's the city. The city's been on the downturn. It's okay. Yeah. Hey, at least you have Eminem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got Machine Gun Kelly just got absolutely destroyed by the guy. Oh, I know. That's the thing. It's like 
Cleveland's not really a big, I mean, it's a big music area, you know, with a lot of stuff, but in terms of actual artists produced, it doesn't seem like a lot come through. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. I think it's weird because it's like a big, like, I mean, there's a lot of country, you know, and then there's a lot of rap, and it's all just a bunch of styles mixed together. Obviously, Cleveland rock, so. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's weird. Uh, okay, so next thing I wanted to ask you about uh, another team that's not performing well by Barcelona. We're recording this on Friday, so this will probably drop, I think, on Thursday next week. So uh, okay. we're about, let's see, let's check the time here, about 40 minutes removed from the opening season game, and they, of course, lost. Um, I just want to say, I saw them last week in, at the Michigan Stadium. Yeah, how was that? It was insane. I can talk about that more in a second. I just want right. to say, for anyone you know who really cares, thinking how I feel, I saw this coming. Really? Because they played excellent. Excellent in Michigan. It was, it was beautiful. I can talk about it in a second. But let, let's just do some simple you know, thinking here, logical thinking, right? You know, I love to do this. So they played on Saturday, Saturday night. <coughs> right? um, going on a flight to Barcelona is roughly a six-hour flight, you know, six-and-a-half-hour flight, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that really messes with your head, you know. It's a long overseas yeah, flight. Yeah, jet lag and all that, all that other stuff. And then they had to play on Friday. So from the minute Saturday, you know, was done, they wake up, they fly back. I mean, that's that's only five days, and you know, uh, Messi was still injured. Suarez got injured in the thirty seventh minute. Uh, I think they both injured, like minorly injured their calves, so they'll be fine. Ah, uh, that's good. That's good. Dembele, Dembele played like crap. Um, so and then Griezmann was really. I mean, he didn't get the ball fed to him. So. The Hong looks really good. Man, they got to feed the Frenchman, bro. I know. Uh, he, he, speaking of how the game went last week, he's uh, he's Katie's favorite player now. Yeah, I, I saw I, – I forget what, if it was on her Snapchat story or if it was on her Instagram story, but she, like, posted about the Frenchman, like, a couple times. Yeah. We had row 10 seats, and he Ooh. was along our side. We were on the 40-yard line, so he was along our – uh, sideline for a while. I mean, he, he's got, I, I can't blame her. Nice curly hair. I don't have that. <laughs> I mean, he's got a nice butt. It's, it's good. But yeah, the, the game was crazy. Um, so they played their full lineup and other than Messi, of course. And, uh, it was, it was an insane experience. Have you been to one of the European matches like that, that they come over? No, I haven't, but, uh, my brother went to, uh, I think it was Liverpool. Mm-hmm. They played the Indiana uh wait was it this year a couple years ago oh this year it was this year they might have i mean there's so many games now i saw liverpool a couple years ago Uh, okay Uh, but yeah i mean it's just uh, part of it is so crazy and i i I haven't been too close for a couple of the other games that i've seen that when they come over but for barcelona you know i I paid a fair amount of money and sure i'm sure it's just insane because this is what i told my one friend i don't think i mentioned it to michael the other day when I was talking to him on the pod, but the the fact you're watching the game and, you know, on TV you see, like, great long passes and you're like, oh, that's just how they do it, you know, and, of course, you and I, you know, you, you know we used to play from the back, so we know how hard it is to actually hit a ball like that. Oh, absolutely. And you, you see, you know, when you're there and you're seeing, you see Jared P.K. look up, you know, from the right center back position, look up, pick out Jordi Alba's left nipple to play it to so we can touch it forward and play. Right. And it, it it's just like that, Stra- and sh- it's like straight to the areola. Uh, it's crazy. It's insane, and it's just it's a lot of the smaller things, you know, and Dembele's quickness and Griezmann's little touches and stuff and flicks, and it's just so incredible that you can't see on TV. And I'm sure the same the same goes for when you watch an NFL game, like the speed of the games. You know, I know when I watch UCF compared to TV and uh, watching in the stadium, it's just so much quicker. So yeah, for sure. I know a lot of uh, there's been a lot of movement towards you know uh, just watching at home you know having all the sweet set, set up and I love that but like I still think occasionally you know you gotta go to a stadium just to watch because it's it's so oh yeah dude that, that's part of the fun I agree so like if you, if you love the sport like go out and go see a game like I mean I know <laughs> words like you have to yeah especially college football college football is big. oh yeah college football is the best. So, uh, you remember Nick Repo? Yeah. He's at Penn State. Correct. Um, I don't know if this, I don't know if he knows who I am or anything, but <laughs> I may hit him up and be like, hey, let me go. Because I, I, I think that Penn State plays Ohio State at Penn State, but I'm not positive on that. 
But if they are, I'm going to ask if you can give me a ticket and I'd be in their student section or whatever. But that'd, that'd be, be crazy. Pretty, that'd be sweet. Do you know who Penn State plays on the road this year? Michigan? No, UCF. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So I, I played with him a little bit before he left. So I was joking with Will Sheeran, who, um, you know, he's been on the where's pod before. At? Will Sheeran? Yeah, where's he at? University of New England. So that's up in Maine. Okay. Yeah. So I was messing, because Will and Nick grew up together. So I was messing with Will a little bit. I'm like, he definitely doesn't know who I am. But I'm probably going to go to the game. So they play here, I think, September 6th. So that's what I checked. I was like, is he still on the roster? And he is. So, I mean, uh, he, did you hear about what happened to him, how he broke his leg in half? Who, Reeple or Will? Reeple. Will's fine. No, what happened to him? So it was there uh, my senior year. So, what, two, three years ago now? Mm-hmm. And they were playing U.S. in the playoffs like Catholic was. So, you know, Colin Kane was on Lake Catholic. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and then Will and was for U.S. So my dad and I went to the game. We were sitting with the Sheerans. And um, for people that don't know, I know you know, but when you two-foot someone, uh, <laughs> in soccer is termed when you are running and then you uh, go on the ground, but you come up with two feet um, to tackle someone and hit their leg. It's, it's an immediate red card. It's one of those things, you know, where you say you two foot, you know, whatever. I mean, and that's what happened to Repo in the center mid. You know, he's playing the six, and he someone did that to him, and he snapped his uh, tibia. Oh. I believe it was in half. Uh, I think Frank was the ref, you know, and he said he instantly. It was one of those situations where, for a high school game, the ambulance had to drive onto the field Jeez. Uh, to take care of it. But obviously, he's still playing at Penn State, you know, D one. So credit to him for that kind of comeback. Yeah, that recovery. I mean, that must have been hard for him. No, yeah, so, I mean, D1 soccer, as we know, is not easy. So, <laughs> Do you still play uh, soccer at all? Up at no, the man, do you guys do games? crazy, bro. I'm missing like crazy. So, I actually, um, mm-hmm. so the, I, quick backstory. So I, uh, I'm thinking of doing a couple things at the Coast Guard, whether okay. it being a mechanic on yeah. the boat engine or um, the helo mechanic, so aviation mechanic. Oh, wow. Or I'd go to the academy, I'd be an officer, mm-hmm. and I'd play soccer for them for four years. So what, what league would they play in then? That, I have no idea. Because, like, Army and Navy play, you know, like, Navy's in our conference, for instance. Right. For football. So, like, I'm not... Okay, interesting. I don't know, but I think... I don't know. I'm kind of leaning towards the academy. Yeah, that, uh, sounds, that sounds like a great opportunity. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what goes. I'll put in a package. See if I get accepted. And go from there. Yeah, that'd be really nice. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. So, you said uh, helio engineer. I know you said another word, but like working on helicopter engines and working on or aviation engines and working on you know ship engines. What what kind of goes into that? Like, so do you? Would you then have to? You know, because for a lot of us, you know, going to it's more structured where it's like college and then you know you then you go out into the field and figure it out like that do you do like a blend of like do you do any classwork at all or do you just learn on the on the go no so uh well it's kind of kind of both but they so we have a schools okay uh, and those are like uh the primary um schools where you can learn a job in the coast guard um so I'm a non-rate right now. Um, okay. So when I put my name on that list to go to an A school, I have to wait however long that class is until there's a spot open for me. Mm-hmm. I go there, and then they give me kind of like the basics, like here's this, this, and this, and um, they give us homework, so we study, and we're also like it's it's kind of it's kind of like a mini college. It's kind of just like a semester. Yeah, like a crash course almost or something yeah. like that? Okay. Yeah. And then we go to our new unit and uh, we kind of learn from on our own experience. We also learn from people who have been there and done that. Okay. For a while. And yeah, I mean, it's definitely, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's, uh, yeah. it is, it's a little overwhelming, but that'll be uh, no problem at all. 
Well, that's good. I'm glad you're kind of getting deeper into the 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 whole program in there and kind of thing. Yeah, so, like, like, I think I may actually make a career out of this thing. Yeah. So how would that like? So you would, you know, work in the Coast Guard. I, I assume there's. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm not. I don't even look at this stuff because I'm still going to school for six more years, whatever. <laughs> so you know, you're you get into your job, whatever, and or with the Coast Guard, you know, you're doing that stuff, and you, I'm sure you hit like a certain year amount where you get, you know, pension, tenure, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, that's twenty years. Okay, so is that like your? Obviously, a lot can change in the next nineteen years. Uh, yeah. but, but are you looking to stay in for that long? Because you'd, you'd still be pretty young when you're getting out since you started yeah, 18. I'd be, yeah, uh, I'd be 38. And yeah, you'd be shy of 40. So Collecting pension, and then I can start a whole new life outside. Right. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's the plan anyways. Right now, I kind of, I'm not kind of like, I really like what I'm doing. Um, I really believe in the cause. I really believe that uh, we're making a difference. So, I mean, I I keep so I enjoy. It. I'm just gonna go in one enlistment at a time, every four years. See how it goes. So is that what the enlistment time is? Is four years? That's gonna be my next question. Uh, yeah. So uh, for enlisted personnel, yes, it's four years. But officers, they're kind of different. Okay. So if I, go ahead. If I go to the academy, I'd be there for four years learning. Mm-hmm. It's kind of it's, the academy is basically college. I see. Because I know there's a, a program that we always have someone come in and talk to our club about here at UCF, the pre-med club, uh, that is talking about like the Navy. And I know the Army does it too, where it's like a scholarship program where it's like, okay, we'll pay for your med school. And then how many ever years you use our funds for, then you give that back to the uh, service organization, the Army, Navy, as like a officer or something like that, like non-combatant, obviously. Um yeah, it's, it's kind of it's kind of the same thing. Okay. Yep. So I, I go to the academy for four years, and then I have to at least do five. I see. Okay, that makes sense. Before they get their like use quote unquote out of me. Yeah, I mean, and that's what it is. It's like you know, you trade a year for a year or something like that. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yep. So, I guess you know, there's a lot of people that'll go through, and you know, when they hit 18, they'll just go to whatever state school or something like that, like whatever. Or a lot of times the college their parents go to nothing against their that choice but you know as an 18 year old it's kind of tough to look up you know and um choose you know like your the next four years of your life or you know longer what's it like you know sitting there your senior year um i know and of course we talked a little bit at the time so i'm kind of you know with the inside knowledge here but asking you know just to kind of explain a little bit your thoughts how like you look up and you're like you know there's this really conventional path, and I'm sure all of your – most of your friends – I know I, we know one guy uh, who also did the Coast Guard same time as you. But like you know, you're going against the grain here. You're doing something that you know, a lot of people don't really do. What's it, what's it like you know, being different in that regard or reaching that conclusion? Uh, so reaching the conclusion, I kind of realized that I didn't want to be in a ton of debt. Yeah. Uh, my grades, my grades were really good, but with the school I wanted to go, Mount Union. I wanted to go, to, <clears throat> excuse right. me, I to go to Mount Union. Uh, it was just too much, mm-hmm. and uh, I wanted to play soccer so bad, but I kind of screwed the pooch on it. I I waited a long time to put in an application, and I was lazy. Yeah. So, I mean, the next best, I was gonna go to a community college. Mm-hmm. But I decided not to. I don't remember why, but <laughs> I think it was actually Coach George. I think it was Coach George that told me to uh, to get out of here and experience some stuff. It's the second straight podcast Coach George has been mentioned on. And if the listeners are starting to really gather that he's an influential figure for most of he us is. that came through I, the program. I mean, I've known him forever. Yeah, you really – uh, so he coached your team, right? Like most of the your youth years. So you really, oh, absolutely, so you got the full experience. I was like eight. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, I, I kind of get what you're saying. I mean, I'm not going to name names, but I have had friends tell me, you know, they're five figures in debt, and I think with that, you know, if you're, you know, if, if you're doing what you love, you know, if, or if you're working towards doing what you love. And you're, you know, you're taking on debt, but you're also getting the classes, you know, you're getting your stuff and then you, when you graduate, you know, you're going to be able to pay that off, that kind of thing. It, it's different. But, um, for some people I've heard, you know, they, 
at 18, they're like, I'm just going to go to school, whatever. You know, it's somewhere in Ohio. And then I'm going to figure out what I want to do there. Yeah, I, that's what, I, yeah, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And mm-hmm. um, that's kind of what kind of pushed towards the military and my mom and my dad. Yeah. So, so like, that's, hey, look at this. And, mm-hmm. So and you did it right, I think, because if you don't like have this, you know, when I came into college, I was like, I, I, I really feel like I want to be a doctor. Granted, life, you know, sometimes puts you on a different uh, it's course. Got a different course, yeah, absolutely. So you know, always open to that. But in you know, I'm two years in now, still, still on the doctor path. That's good. Uh, um, but for a lot of other people, you know, they go in and they think they're just going to find it, and sometimes they don't. And if you don't, you're then. 60 50 70 depending on where you go you know grand in debt for what and i mean it's it's this just blows my mind well it's if you really i mean maybe not you since you didn't choose to go to college yet but if <laughs> if the people who are in college right now listening to this are like yeah this tuition's ridiculous if you want to look up a graph of the inflation rate you know just the regular customary inflation rate compared to the cost of college tuition over the years it's it's asinine it, it, it'll make you so mad because it's just it, it's an insane you know incalculable level of, it, it just keeps increasing yeah and it's it's insane i know there are some schools i've heard of for instance the university of purdue a uh very good engineering school in West Lafayette, Indiana, uh, part of the Big Ten. They have frozen tuition costs, um, oh, which okay. is really nice. I know some schools will freeze your tuition. I believe uh, Thorne was telling me Miami of Ohio does it. I, I could be misquoting him, so my ha- Miami, if you don't do that, then you're just worse off like everyone else. <laughs> um, but that they freeze tuition once you get there. So once you start, then you're it's constant through the four years. For me, I mean, I'm blessed you know, with my situation, but I know the tuition goes up. For you know, every year it's over there. I'm what? So you're a genius over there getting paid to go to college. I, you know, I, I just don't like to say that about myself, but I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> I'm, I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky. You know, I, I, um, I was just talking to Katie about this. It's like, I just happened to look at UCF. You know how you get all those letters and view books in the mail, you know, and a lot of them you throw out. Yeah, dude, I had so many. Yeah. So no matter, you know, you get them all. And for some reason, I just looked at UCF's. Literally, I didn't know anything about them, uh, and for some reason, I opened theirs up out of all the ones. I don't know why I didn't open up Oklahoma's or Nebraska's or that kind of stuff, you know. And it's just it's sometimes, and you kind of said it, God puts you on a different path. It's it's I'm not one of those people, you know, that is just all like you know God's guiding my life and I'm just here going along. But I do think there's certain times where it's like you know he he interjects. Yeah, and there's a lot of stuff in my life that you know just it's you know. Very toss, you know, it's a toss up, and you know it's fifty fifty, and then one thing happens, and one thing didn't. For instance, there was a time in my middle school life where my dad was driving to Indiana every week for work. You know, he was. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, could have easily moved to Indianapolis. I mean, how different would my life have been then? <laughs> it's ridiculous, man. You know, and, and that, that's sometimes what I'll do. You like you sit, you're sitting there at night and you just play the what if game in your head. Yeah, like, no. <laughs> I know. I do that all the time. So it's, yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, anyway, college tuition, ridiculous. So I, th- I think you did it right. And obviously you're still gaining valuable experience. You know, with the oh, yeah, man, real life experience. I, I do have to say, though, going from, um, you know, being at home all the time and mm-hmm. family and everything and then going to boot camp and then coming here, it was a hard transition, man. Yeah. The hardest thing I've ever had to do. Mm-hmm. So are uh, you, you you like you mentioned you have uh, roommates and stuff. Are you renting out an apartment then, or is it like Coast Guard? Uh, so yeah, housing? it's Coast Guard. So um, my roommate is also um, a buddy of mine at the unit. Okay. And so is the other one. So we all work together. I see. Okay, that's good uh, then. He he bought a house a couple year a uh, year ago, and uh, that's three rooms. So he's like, okay, well, I'll just rent it out. Yeah, that makes sense. Here I am. Is adult life weird for you? Uh, it was at first. It still kind of is. It's, I'm like still kind of like used to it, or not not used to it. Still kind of new to it. Yeah, like but, a pseudo adult almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, makes sense. It's, it's 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 just it was such a big adjustment. I had such a hard time mm-hmm. trying to adjust. Like I think a big reason was because my family and my friends were so like, I was so close with them. 
Yeah, for sure. And I was so far away and um, it didn't help that it was over Christmas and Thanksgiving or, um, and New Year's. And right. I miss so, kind of important stuff in my family's life. But uh, I just come to accept it and I do the best I can to keep in touch with them and all is well. Yeah, it's like the two sides of the same coin, you know. On the one hand, you're in a completely different area, you know, learning a ton about life, just perspective, because I've mentioned it before on here, you know, when I bring on people from North Ridgeville, it's like, you know, it's it's not a small town per se. It's a suburb, yeah. but yeah, it's certainly yeah. ha- you get the small town vibe, you know, you get the kind of Ohio Midwest vibe. You know? For real, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when, when you're, you know, you're in Philadelphia, I've been in Orlando, I've talked to other people uh, that go other places like Michael, for instance, just came on here uh, episode before yours, and he's talking about Portugal and just how eye opening it is. So, I know. Oh, I, I was talking to him at the alumni game for a little bit, and man, that's that's awesome. It is. It's awesome. So it's like you you get these kind of experiences, but to do that, you have to sacrifice a lot of family time. And I know you were mentioned that you weren't able to go home for Thanksgiving or anything like that. I'm thankful at least I can, I can do that. So, I mean, I know it's a, your time's a lot more stricter, you know, getting time off <laughs> uh, compared to us when we get breaks and stuff like that. So I know it's a bit tougher for you, certainly. But I mean, I think the other part of that is, you know, there's not that I appreciate is that I've had to figure a lot of shit out on my own because it's like, oh, you yeah, know, I, I can yeah. call my dad. You know, try to figure it out, but you know he might be doing this or that because you know they're busy people, and it's just like you know you gotta you gotta figure this out on your own. You gotta work on your own stuff and really you know saddle up. <laughs> yeah, they, they can only give you guidance; they can't actually do it for mm-hmm. you. That's where I think my upbringing was really helpful. You know, I owe my parents a lot. You know, and, and oh problem yeah, solving. me too. Yeah, so uh, I mean, it, it's it, it's really interesting. You know, you you, you get the upbringing, then you go to another place, and how. I wouldn't say different the people are, but also just like all the different, you know, collection. Of oh, people, dude, it I is guess. so it's so cool being at the base because like there's so many different people from so many different places. Like uh, my my boss, she's from uh, she's from Miami, and then um, one of the mechanics is from Philly. He's like yeah. born raised in there, and Delaware, and Rhode Island, and it, it's it's so cool to see like how other people interact with each other and there's so many different cultures like uh uh, my roommate v he's uh mexican okay um probably like once a week we try and hit up a a mexican spot and eat some mexican food and yeah it just like broadened my horizon and everything it's so cool mexican food and seafood but the two things i've gotten into since i've been down here yep so good Yeah, I think it's a really important point, you know, is getting more perspective and stuff like that, especially, you know, now in the time we live in, it's been, you know, very hyper polarized and whether this is hate speech or not, you know, that people are saying that elected officials are saying, you know, I'm not, but it's, it's, it's definitely a time where you really should have your horizons broadened because, you know, this country isn't just, you know, one where we had a, you know, like, some European countries, you know, like Austria, it's just been Austrians, you know, uh, yeah. that kind of thing. And, you know, I mean, we, we really are a melting pot of cultures. So many different, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's so it's, cool. I love it. And love Phil, it. Philly's got actually a really diverse, uh, city. Yeah. I can imagine. It really is. Is it a lot of Italians there, right? Is that, yeah. That's so okay. there, there's a lot of Italians. There's a lot of, uh, Asian people. There's yeah, a lot yeah. of, um, Obviously, African American people. There's uh, and whites. I mean, it, it's it's kind of they kind of like have their own like little part area in the town. Yeah, like neighborhoods almost. Yeah. Okay. So you can just kind of hit up wherever you want, and that's what's pretty cool. That's great. Yeah, Philly's Philly's a cool place, man. I recommend if you uh, ever want to anyone who's listening, and if they want to check out a place. Check out this, man. Definitely have to do a, a home and home. I'll have to come up there and you can come down here. Oh, for sure. For sure. We'll have to, we'll have to figure that out. All right. So where, where's your uh, – I know you say you like Philly. Where's the one place in the country you, like, want to go to be deployed next that you can just think of off the top of your head? Keys. Keys? Yeah. Have you been down here? No. I bet. Well, I've been to Orlando with that tournament, uh, the Disney tournament. But That's right. 
Yes. If I if I could be down at the Keys, man, whole life would be fantastic. Or any, anywhere down there in Florida. Miami. Mm. Whew. Miami's pretty close to the Keys. Yeah, the Keys are, I'm trying to think, maybe three hours away from here. But probably a little longer than that. So I haven't been down there either. But, I mean, I just hear it's beautiful. So uh, by the time your next deployment, though, happens, you, it might be underwater. It might be flooded. So we, we don't. <laughs> the whole state might be going under. Hey, good thing I... Uh I'm on boats. That's true. Yeah, you guys can patrol the former land that was the Florida Keys. It's now just part of the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> Goodness, it's insane. It's crazy. How do you feel about the fact that you are going to be able to vote in next year's election? That's cra- I could have. Uh, no, I couldn't take it back. No, I couldn't have voted. So in the last one, so that's I was. Why. I was thinking uh, the mayor's election or the city or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was actually in boot camp when that happened. I was trying to uh, fill out my affidavit. Mm-hmm. You, you get like five minutes for mail and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I was sitting in boot in, uh, in the in the barracks and um, just trying to fill that out. And uh, they just come there like lights out, turn off the lights. You got to get in your rack, and it, it just was a big pain in the butt. So I just said, "Screw it." Yeah, I know I'm a bad American, but it's okay. I mean, it's it's. It happens, especially. I mean, I know you were talking circumstances, about the last uh, proceeding or however that phrase is. Yeah, I can imagine your, uh, your. I don't know. Is it sergeant? Is it command? I don't know. Company like, commander. Yeah, yeah. I, I imagine a, a whooping from him would not be uh, <laughs> no ideal. No. Dude, I had to. Um, so we were in formation, getting ready to go back to the house. Yeah. Uh, and um, I had to sneeze, so. I, <laughs> And you're not supposed to move in formation at all. Right. And I sneezed, and I noticed that there was, you know, boogers on my uniform. And this uh, is like my inspection-ready uniform. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm screwed. So, like, I'm sitting there, like, trying to fiddle with, like, trying to get it off. Mm-hmm. But it was, just kind of like, it was just kind of a natural habit. And one of the, the chiefs, um, spot, chief is, like, a very high-ranking uh, person. Okay. Um, and uh, he spotted me and he's like you get in the house I was like oh I'm <laughs> so I get in there and he's like what's your name and I was like hey chief I didn't say hey chief but I was like chief uh, my name is uh, Seaman Cruz Smith and he's like what are you doing and I was like I sneezed and I had some stuff on my uniform and he's like you're the worst recruit I've ever seen in my life I was like oh <laughs> that hurts and he goes you see that you see that mattress over there and i was like yes chief he's like go pick that up and put it over your head i was like oh my god so you know i was to do it and i had to hold it up above my head for like 20 minutes while he was telling me how bad of a uh, recruit i was are you are you serious that's swear i thought that thing was only in that type of behavior is only in movies (laughs) no man (laughs) dude some of the stuff that they say it's a comedy show Oh my. I mean, I, I imagine that it's it's trained you to withhold yourself in certain situations. Yeah, I mean, military bearing. That's yeah, you've been – you're a very social, you know, and always oh, yeah, laughing dude. guy. I smile. I laugh, dude. I talk to – excuse me. I talk to anyone. It was so hard to, like, suppress that feeling of, <laughs> like, my normal civilian stuff. <laughs> That's insane to me to think about. Goodness. I would never make it in the military, so props to you. Appreciate it. Thank you. You'd be all right. I, I just you, you 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 trained with Coach George for a little bit. Yeah, it's just not my style, though. That's true. I guess, like, I, in terms of not style, but you know, in terms of just being like the very regimented thing, I I just I don't think I would make it. I think that's another thing why the military kind of drew my attention was because it's like a set schedule every day. Yeah. So like, I kind of know what to expect. Right. That makes sense. That's that's kind of the stuff I like. So, so uh, to to finish up, do you have a story crazier than the one you just told that you are allowed to tell? Um, let's see. Yeah, I think I could think of one. So we were again in formation, getting ready to go to Chow, and uh, you have it's to wait like five it's, or ten. It's chow dinner. Yeah, sorry, just Chow dinner. Sure. Um. Uh, what was I? Oh yeah, so we're just chilling there, waiting for the other company to finish, and then we can go in. And the company commanders walk around um, and um, down the rows, 
to check to see if we shaved. Okay. And uh, this guy, he uh, obviously didn't shave. The company commander walked past him, and then he like did a double take and like backpedaled, and he gets right up in his face, and he screams, "Oh my God! This guy has mother effing pubes on his face!" Dude, the <laughs> whole company, bro, started busting out laughing. It was ridiculous. That's so funny. Funniest stuff ever. So there are some uh, more lighthearted commanders then. Yeah, but like he was like, he's funny, but he's like, he's like, uh, he's like got the cover of like being mean. Yeah. If if you understand what I'm trying to say. I think I do. So that's that's funny. That's great. It, it's 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 awesome. Well, I'm glad you're really enjoying yourself over there. Yeah, man, it, it's going pretty well. I'm in like like I said, I was struggling a little bit in the beginning, but now I'm such I'm in a much better place. I feel like myself, and things are going very well. I'm like, I'm very excited. I'm nervous because I don't know what I want to do. Obviously, in the Coast Guard yet. Yeah. But I'm very excited to see what is next. That's fantastic. I'm really happy for you. Also, really proud of you. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Of course. Well. Thank you for coming on. We'll have to do this again. Dude, for sure. I'd love to be on again. When you get the chance. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, brother. Brother, you the best. Double dose Z, baby. That's right. (laughs) Thank you for listening to the Assist Podcast. If you like the show, go drop a five-star rating. That really helps us keep the show going. If you want to stay updated with all the podcast episodes, hit the subscribe button and also go follow our Twitter, which is at assist underscore podcast and our Instagram, which is now the assist podcast. And you can write any emails, uh, any suggestions you have to the assist pod at yahoo.com. And we'll see you next week.